leaders are expected to be all rounders who have an answer for every question asked by the followers especially if you are a trainer and a coach today as part of leadership series by global tv we bring one such leader who has shown exceptional talent in whatever she has undertaken major nubur gupta welcome to our discussions on leadership by global tv thank you she is currently a corporate trainer a leadership consultant visiting faculty for many major business schools in the country a motivational speaker a career counselor she has led many faculty development programs has been a member of many award jury presentations she is a keynote speaker major nubur gupta is a painter adventure sports enthusiast national level player at school in volleyball she is a tri series sailing champion she is also a mountaineer and she has been a best cadet during her ncc days above all she is a retired major from indian army thank you major nubur gupta for being with us today i am sure your words of wisdom will be enlightening our listeners thank you thank you for the kind words you know as leaders we have certain qualities and some leaders develop these qualities from a early age some pick it up as they grow in their career or as they come up in their career what has been your experience did you show leadership qualities from an early age or you picked it up as you picked up your career uh see uh, frankly speaking as a child i don't recall that uh, i had set up to become a leader no but something which was unique was uh, just to give you a background uh, we are three yeah. brothers and sisters so i have okay. one elder sister and one younger brother and whenever the discussion used to happen in house it used to be uh, after any discussion it used to be uh, leave the elder one she is elder and leave the younger one he is younger so i i realized i need to create a place for myself and uh, that place or that listening that people had to listen my opinion uh, uh, i i will have to carve out that path small small issues uh, which i feel i always used to be very curious about it i used to ask why and i'm sure most of our childhood uh, if we recall uh, was brought up in the way of uh, as i say with the vitamin n you want to go somewhere no you want to meet someone no you want to do something different no our parents wanted us to be outstanding without letting us do anything out of the norm set by the society and i was one child i recall as i was always that why why no i need to get that answer of why where when and how kinds of things so yes uh, whether i recall a incident from class 3 where i got selected in a debate which was a interstate debate at that point of time or okay. whether it was my school or co curricular activities my question used to be why i can't do it okay and that was the challenge which led me to follow a path which was actually not followed by many okay later years in school uh, i became the school captain also and i realized over a period of time people started looking up to me okay i i started leading small groups then it became team and then it became leading the uh, school also so yes leadership skills were there but naturally i think uh, i never made an attempt to be a leader it happened naturally those why possibly give me that uh, what change i want to bring in and it was more about uh, doing the right things uh, okay. than to uh, doing anything i felt it was right it was important at that point of time and that is what led me to a leadership skills very very interesting i think it's a very good lesson that any leader should have this enthusiasm to ask why and then try to find answer for that which is a very interesting characteristics which uh, you showed from your early years 
and which probably help you in building up your uh, leadership qualities yes as we grow up and as we come up in life our leadership style actually evolves i we have we would have seen many uh, leaders who have evolved over a period of time so what has been your experience uh, did your leadership style evolve over a period of time or uh, it has been quite the same wise I I feel it was changing every every few years. It was changing uh, since we talked about the change while we were growing up, and there was stereotypes which were existing in the society. So if I look okay. back to my school and college time, I'll go back to the theories. So it was more of a transformational leadership style. When I look back at uh, my uh, army days, uh, it was more of a charismatic style because till the time I was in college. Uh, i used to be guided by what my parents are saying or what my society is saying there was a challenge but yes i was looking to change those stereotypes and become more of a transformational leader but uh, when i came into the army it came into more of a charismatic like one small incident i like to share here uh, okay. earlier we used to be known as daughters of mr gupta my surname maiden name is also gupta so we were known yeah. as daughters of mr gupta or children of mr gupta Right, the right. day I came back wearing a uniform and back into our same society where I lived, my first posting was Delhi back to my parents' place. So yeah. everybody in the society used to stand. We used to stay. Uh, we were staying in a government uh, colony. Okay. So while I used to go for my office in uniform, at least what I recall is everybody used to be standing in the morning and telling their children, "You need to be like this girl." now she is a army officer so that charisma which took over whenever i interacted i had an opportunity to interact with ncc students uh, uh, going to universities for recruitment and other places so okay. it was post the college or after getting into army it became more of a charismatic uh, leadership later on i'll say it is more of a inspirational or a influence kind of thing uh, as a trainer or as a leadership consultant now because one needs to encourage one needs to Correct. guide people uh, one Correct. needs to create a connect between the kind of uh, different audience that you are connecting in fact a lot of importance is given to iq all these years but okay. i feel now it is important that we give importance to emotional quotient or emotional okay. intelligence that you are okay. able to connect with your audience or as we say your followers so over a period of time i've changed from uh, transformational to charismatic to influential kind of a leadership style i'll say so as we progressed in our uh, profession or in our career you are saying that we'll keep changing our leadership style depending on the situation and where we are placed we intentionally do not do that but the yeah. kind of roles or the kind of responsibilities that we are assigned with because yes. when we come in a job we have a responsibility but when we are a student we do not have that uh, onus it is of right, self development right. so it keeps changing according to the situation yes in your uh, journey of uh, so many years is there any person who would have had a special influence on your personality or leadership yes a lot of people i i think everybody it's difficult to give a name to specific few people and leave the others behind influence is guided by a lot of people you interact with a lot of situations or experiences that you have had a lot of places that you are connected with so right. uh, i feel there were a lot of people who yes did influence me how they behave how they interact how they communicate uh, what kind of a guidance like uh, we say uh, good people give you good memories but bad people give you fantastic lessons of life uh, okay. so somewhere when we talk about influence it is not only about the positive influence okay. but is it also about the influence when you interact with people and situation uh, that you learn what is to be done what is That's the right way of doing a thing and what are the things you are supposed to avoid and integrity and trust there there are a number of people you will come across who will give you a different version when they are in front of you right behind you they have a different uh, version your actions speak louder than your words and your integrity your trust and connect with your people right is what connects them in a longer run and they create influence bad and good is to be judged by us 
So you are saying that our leadership styles can get influenced by heroes as well as anti-heroes. It's all about how we look at it. I'm, I'm sure you would have uh, seen recently there was a viral video. Uh, the boy who was running in the midnight coming back from a job uh, from a yes, McDonald's. Yes. Determination in that child uh, to perform his task. Nobody right. has asked him. He is the leader of future. We, we see so many names in front of us and sometimes we feel, no, no, they come from a different planet and I come from a different planet. No. That's right. That's I think right. we all come from a same earth. It is how we relate to them. So whether it was this child who is determined to create a place for himself, another boy who was going for delivery and he is using a, a Yulu bike. That okay. is that e-bike kind of a thing. Uh, which is yeah. more of a modified uh, electronic cycle version. Right. So those are the people who are the leaders for tomorrow because they understand the situation today. They are adapting to change today and they are leading way for people. Very nice. Very, very good way of looking at who can influence us. You know, in life, sometimes incidents which drives us. For example, in the case of Mahatma Gandhi, an incident in a train in South Africa led to a totally different personality by himself and led to a lot of other things which in changed the way the world looked at him and he looked at the world. So is there any incident which you can think of which would have influenced your leadership style or your leadership journey? Yes, I, I think I uh, started with the conversation where uh, I talked of that I had to find a place for myself. Uh, yes. As a child yes. or as a girl, our society expects certain norms of behavior for girls. Right. So you have to be good looking. You have to sit like in a particular fashion. You have to behave in a certain fashion. Your basic responsibility or the onus of nurturing the family stays with girls. Right. There was one uh, incident where uh, my parents were having an interaction with their friends and okay. one of the friends, and I was, I think, just an adolescent, 13, 14 kind of age. Somebody made right. a comment. Uh, okay. Your ki shadi mein to koi pareshani nahi aayegi, but choti ki shadi ke liye aapko yeah. bahut jute ghisne padenge. And what you see me today is not what mm -hmm. I was when I was a teenager. Okay. I was more of a tomboy, uh, okay. ugly duckling in the house. And uh, I was not following any of the norms which a typical girl in our society has to follow. I was not aware how to cook. I was very blunt and straightforward in talking and so many other things which are typical. I, I was more outgoing, outspoken. That somehow forced me that I have not carved a niche for myself as a typical girl would do. I would not fit into the role. If somebody tells right. me you sit back at home and uh, be be a very good wife, be a very good mother, just cook and spend your day watching TV and entertainment channels, possibly I'm not made for that, those kinds of things. Right. So I realized that when I was just 13 and 14 and I knew I had to do something. What was that something? I was not aware. Right. But right. I had to do something different which others were not doing. I started pursuing uh, co-curriculars. I started pursuing sports. And that is what led me. And uh, God, God given, uh, I was performing well in academics. So I became a school captain also. Then I represented the university also. Uh, right. when, when I went in college, uh, generally you have freshers. Right. So uh, I, I was not one of those very competitive kinds. But yes, I was very uh, team player kind of a person. So everybody yep. forced me that you go into that Miss Pressure com competition. And I knew I'm not good looking. So I used to avoid <laughs> such kind of things. Somehow I went there and uh, participated in the event and all that. And I came back with a trophy. This, this is 91. Uh, Maitri College, Delhi University, 91. So when I came back with that trophy at my home, that trophy was kept aside and said, it doesn't make a difference. Oh. What makes a difference is what percentage do you get in college? So somewhere, those small, small incidents of everyday life, which forced you to think, what is material? Is my good looking so important? Is my effect in shape so important? Is my academic score only so important? Or all other things which I am doing are not as important. So uh, I was not convinced with that idea. And I continued participating in so many things other than my college uh, studies, which led me to where I am today. Correct, correct.
so they were those uh, uh, change agents i'll say or change uh, process which let me to believe that yes i need to do something different and if if you recall there used to be a serial by the name udan okay yeah those were the kinds of things which uh, charmed me to that i need to create something different and that is what uh, was uh, i'll say a guiding force for us so you you are heart of heart you wanted to be different and you continue to ask this question why to yourself yeah. and to the world around you but you did not give up on something because somebody was passing a comment about it more you object to it more stronger will be my desire to perform and uh, all thanks to them that i had lot of vitamin n to perform <laughs> so i i had to work hard to ensure that i succeed in whatever my dreams are so you, whatever obstacles you saw through from others you made it as your uh, kind of enthusiasm and your determination to make sure that you perform to succeed yes. that's what you are trying to sell yes i think it it holds good for many many leaders if you have seen uh, i'm sure uh, some of the listeners for this program will also be inspired i'm sure they there are still parents who are the n factors uh, which will definitely help the people to understand and they can definitely relate to what you are saying we come across a lot of challenges uh, as leaders especially i think every day is a challenge if you really take leadership roles so is there any challenge which you faced and how did you overcome this challenge okay there are two three major incidents which i faced uh, which uh, have left a very uh, strong impact on my uh, style of working Uh, yeah. we'll go one by one first was uh, we were amongst the first few lady officers who joined the services okay. so the army was not attuned to the environment of having ladies because it was always a male dominated environment right so yes there was a challenge of acceptance there was a challenge of those teething issues on one side the colleagues and uh, people understood that we are already a part of them but still the role whether i am a part of them as a officer whether i am a part of them as a daughter because that fatherly instincts come naturally to them when they find a girl of 2021 in this field of uh, services so yes uh, acceptance of women in the army environment was a, a challenge because there were certain teething issues a major challenge which i felt in the army was at a point of time uh, we were supposed to do a national recruitment of the staff in uh, military engineering services okay now it was team of two officers me and another officer and uh, we had to conduct all india entrance exam then the physical test and then the medical and everything and then they had to be posted to different places now knowing that this being a government recruitment which entails with lot of perks and privileges which come along with a government job there were lot of uh, requests sure. or orders both ways i'll say which okay. were coming to us to cater to the requirement of certain a uh, candidates from politicians from uh, police from uh, known people and so many and so other that was a major challenge because uh, you know that uh, you are uh, like i may be a leader in my role but then i too had my bosses i too had my subordinates i too had my colleagues those right. bosses also had their bosses and the political influence and other things so at that point of time saying no to anybody was a major challenge and at the same time saying yes to anybody was not possible right so uh, i i feel that was a major challenge for us to conduct the whole and and almost what uh, more than a lack of candidates had applied for those 10 20 50 uh, vacancies oh that yes i feel was a major leadership challenge for us because it was a all india recruitment right so uh, keeping everybody in a peaceful environment and conducting that without saying yes and without saying no mm-hmm. was a major challenge which uh, i had to perform and the another one which i feel had a lot of impact on me was uh, i had just left the army okay i had moved into the academic profile so i was a dean of one of the management institutes and uh, when i interacted with the top core of that uh, organization the people who were running the uh, organization their goal was to enhance or bring the uh, ranking of the uh, institute to the higher level 
right for which you need to perform well in academics you need to perform well in sports you need to perform well in all all segments of the uh, arena which a student is related to right so right. initial uh, rehash whenever you change the bosses there is a rehash of team there is a rehash of uh, designing of curriculum and lot of things along with it right it so happened that one faculty was told to move out okay not why this thing but the organization decided that we need more performers at this stage and they yeah. took uh, that thing that we need to redesign our team also yeah and this was i think just two months into that uh, academic institute and all of a sudden i realized that the students have got down to a strike and you know oh. how you the educational environment is so uh, all of a sudden we realized that everything is uh, blocked the student have blocked the ways and all and when i spoke to the other members or the colleagues or my organizers uh, the owners of the uh, educational okay. institute everybody okay. said ma'am aap ghar baithiye because they didn't wanted to take a chance knowing that it is a female and it could also convert into lot of risk uh, yeah. everybody was uh, telling me no no ma'am you don't come that day you sit at home we will handle it. but mm. as an individual i felt if it is my department and if it is my uh, uh, responsibility how can i be sitting at home that's right i i, I cannot say that uh, uh, you handle the show and then at the last day i'll come and take over the responsibility no i'm equally responsible for whatever is happening yes and much against the wishes of the chairman and the management team much against the wishes of my family that very day when the strike was announced and knowing that what is going to happen because we ourselves also had a sources of information uh, i was standing in the front of the gate and i said let it be if i have to interact with my students if it is my students i will be the person interacting with them right they like it they don't like it they hurt me they don't hurt me what is whatever has to happen the first person of contact will be me okay it was a challenging day it was a risky day but yes we came out successfully uh, today many of the students uh, most of my team members are a close family member to us and they are most of them are friends but then sometimes what happens the miscommunication which has been uh, given to them or the connect which is missing especially in the initial days uh, yeah. that was yes a major challenge as a leader right but whatever was done was being done for the betterment of students only absolutely but then that day uh, still stays as fresh in my memory uh, as a major challenge of leadership very nice uh, you know from the two stories two things which i take as message one is every leader at some point of time has to say no and that is a big challenge because the art of saying no without hurting the other person is a skill which we need to get adapted at if you want to stay as a good leader yes. the second thing is about taking responsibility which goes without saying and not being in the friend and saying that i am taking responsibility doesn't go hand in hand if you are a true leader we need to be there and which you showed through your example even though there were other people are telling you not to be there you decided for yourself better be there because that way you are showing the world that you are taking ownership and responsibility for whatever decisions you are doing very nice very very touching incidents you brought in very nice uh, one thing i would like to say here because both the leadership experiences talked of the external environment for right. any individual it is more difficult to fight your own family and your parents mm -hmm. fighting a outsider is not as difficult right because you still may not have as a leader you may have a connect with them but as an individual right. uh if you are fighting a outsider you do not yes. have any emotional uh, responsibility with them right but the major challenge comes when you have to fight your own people or when you have to convince your own people to go uh, and do something different to okay. make them accept as we say na uh, every parent compares the uh, child and says sharma ji ke bacche ne bahut acha kiya tum kya kar rahe ho so uh, to become the outstanding you have to leave the path treaded and you have to find out your own path which is again a major challenge to fight your own people so in this context i have a question for you see if you have to give an advice to the parents i'm sure a lot of parents would be listening to this program 
what would you tell how you will handle a situation where your son or daughter is not pursuing what we have in mind what would be your advice to the parents uh, before giving the advice to the parents i would go for the advice for the children okay uh, see today i am a parent i am a parent of a teenager child and yeah. uh, each one of us is driven by the experiences the life we have gone through and we are guided by certain norms right they may be right in certain context they may be not i am not talking about the validity of those rights and wrong something right for you may not be right for me right but we are guided by our society and we are guided by our norms yeah. so instead of blaming somebody it is very easy for me to blame today okay my parent did not let me do this they did not uh, let me do this but i need to understand as a individual and especially today when i also have a teenager child that why they were behaving that way okay what were their challenges what were their situation they were fighting their own battles for them to move out of the clutches of the society to take a call whether i let my daughter like you would have seen there is a advertisement which says the tagline of the advertisement is ladki ko zyada bahar nikaloge to haath se nikal jayegi i think it is a tractor environment where a parent is taking a child on a cycle and sending her for education or something like this so right. they had their own challenges so first okay. would be that as a child to all the teenagers today or all the future uh, uh, generation uh, the millennial which is today try and understand that yes whatever your parents are doing it is because of their experience it is because of their exposure and because of their constraints right. but not withstanding that yep god has given us life they have not said that life is going to be easy <laughs> so you have the courage to dream so please yeah. dream dream big look forward to your future but don't let anybody restrict your growth just okay. because there are challenges right it is not going to be a easy life for anybody everybody That's is true. fighting their own battles everybody has their own challenges they may be different from mine to yours okay but dream big look at life look at the larger picture vision yourself okay i, I would say it would be a five mantra kind of thing i might have read it somewhere so it stayed with me one make money because the younger generation is in that mode that i need faster or quicker money okay so yes make money it solves many a problem of yours but then money is not everything in life remember that second keep in shape health is very important if you okay. are healthy you can take care of anything else third yeah. stay creative pursue a hobby many of the uh, i'll say the middle age is finding a challenge that they were always so preoccupied with their jobs their careers that they left the family behind they left their children behind they left the time behind which they should have spent enjoying so yes That's be true. creative in your approach uh, be conscious of your hobbies and pursue something beyond your careers right which will give you peace very important aspect develop a knowledge base if you don't have knowledge you will not be able to interact you will not be able to communicate you will not be able to socialize anything whether it is on a social media or whether it is in, in person whether you are a boss whether you are a subordinate develop That's a right. knowledge base and yes something which is very important is be adaptive to the change life is not going to be static a change is the spice of life as we say so adapt to the growth and change mindset okay every new year or every new moment is going to pose a challenge to you to change yourself yeah to be adaptive to it change and growth mindset is what is going to lead you to future so this would be possibly i'll say five mantra for them uh, for coming futures to keep in pace with life and that okay. is very important very nice very nice very good uh... you know five mantras which the younger generation should definitely look at and try to adopt now uh, you are a trainer you are a teacher as a teacher and a, a trainer 
what is your role in uh, you know shaping the leadership of tomorrow is there a positive role a teacher or a trainer can play or the world has changed today we are all led by social media so you cannot have any influence on the mm-hmm. younger generation see when you look back to the concept of leadership there was always a pattern where they said if there is a leader there are supposed to be followers correct somehow i do not agree with that point okay when we talk of a leadership skill when we talk about a trainer when we talk about a teacher what is their role the yeah. role is that whatever wisdom you have acquired from your knowledge from your experiences from your situations you share that wisdom to the next generation right but that sharing does not mean that you restrict them to that okay okay you have to encourage people okay you have to guide people right. you have to motivate people different stages different situations will require individual aspects yep so let's say if i am a leader i need to first motivate them for the task and then encourage them to take the lead so one right. i have to create a better human being or a better version of them second yeah. from a better version of an individual i'll have the responsibility to make them a better team player okay and from a team player if i am not letting that person become the future leader then i am not performing my job so as a leader or as a teacher or as a trainer also my role is to inculcate all those aspects in them and effectively create future leaders okay and we all play a very important role so somewhere to say uh, a leader would be one who knows so you are talking about the knowledge uh, another uh, aspect of the leader from knowledge or sharing of knowledge goes to he follows that path it is very easy for me to say you do this you do this you do that but am i doing it right am i leading the way and from that leading the way he also tells the people that these are the possible options you right. choose your path very nice so he, he knows the way he goes the way and he shows the way that is what is the role of a leader or a trainer or a teacher in today's environment because somebody is not going to follow you just because you are telling them no you are right you you have to motivate them to do that and after that they have to take the lead themselves so yes they have a very important role to play uh, in today's environment i think uh, from time immemorial teachers have always been looked up to by the students so naturally uh, we have a big role as a teacher as a trainer as a coach and uh, uh, not by saying but by doing is what really matters is uh, your take on that now you have been a leader from school days college days so do you enjoy that position of leadership or uh, you know sometimes i found leaders who are very tensed you they will take responsibility they will do everything but through and through they will be tensed while taking leadership roles what has been your experience in uh, in your leadership roles see as i said uh, uh, so when we talked of followers uh most of the time we are worried about how many followers we have got uh, and and the younger children all the more uh, they are very happy i have so many friends on social media i have so many followers on any other social platform so if i talk about myself i was never worried whether people are there with me or not right i was worried what i am doing am i happy doing it okay uh there were many instances which i recall uh which were much against the society which were much against the uh wishes of my parents uh which were must against the norms of the societies okay so uh and i'm sure any leader uh, be it anybody uh, uh in this role do not get into the mindset that they are doing because they want to become a leader no yeah they they generally uh, look from individual perspective first and slowly and slowly the environment sets into that thing that people start looking up to you people start expecting from you that you take the team lead 
uh, in fact i was in one of the session sometime back and we had some team events to be performed uh, without my saying anything and rather i was more participative okay we can do this 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 and at the end of it okay ma'am you take the responsibility and you present so one doesn't set out to become a leader but yes uh, your natural trait is to understand or at least my natural trait is to understand what i am doing why i am doing and whether i am happy doing it or not and if i am happy i'll be able to pe- keep others happy if i'm not happy i am frustrated invariably i'll keep everybody also unhappy right so uh, for me i am enjoying the style i'll not say whether i am enjoying the leadership yes uh, it is more like a onus that people have you know okay you have become a good leader no i i never attempted to do that but yes uh, the role or the onus yes i am a corporate trainer so i make an endeavor to ensure that whatever uh, activities we are doing or whomsoever i interact with i give the best version of myself very nice very nice If very that interesting it other it is their way of looking at it but my perspective of doing it is not because i want to influence somebody okay but yes i am happy doing it because i am happy i am satisfied with what i am doing right. uh, hey i would like to uh, narrate one uh, situation uh, in fact uh, after leaving the army uh, i left the army at the age of 35 or so i had already served for 10 years and uh, that is the time i realized that the uh, uh, if you see the news of permanent commission has come now and right. i am talking of uh, 2000 2007 that was the time when i was finishing my contractual period with army okay so uh, permanent commission was nowhere in discussion okay so i had to think that what is my future in the army are they going to give me further roles are they going to give me the enhancement of uh, the tenures are they going to give me uh, roles of a company commander or a unit ceo or further promotions as we know for the uh, army ranks and all so it was nowhere in picture it was that you come have a short year tenure with the army and then you go right so i was in that situation where i had to take a call whether i continue with the army or not and if continuing with the army it was still only 4 years Okay. so i had done 10 years and a further extension of 4 year was given so for me at that point of time i thought is a right time for me to change make a change in the career if i want to and it is easier for me to get into corporate okay so it was at 35 and i finished my 10 year 10 years with the army and i was looking at moving on from one career to another career shift yep uh we have a course uh with the uh, we we have a tie up uh, from the army or tie up with the uh, all premier institutes in india including iims so okay. i got an opportunity to do a resettlement course or as we say executive management course from i am lucknow i am a alumni of i am lucknow so the first question which many a people asked me at that point of time was why do you want to do a course you have a good husband good family good child you have everything in life you had a career also you earned well also now why at this stage of life do you want to do a course and that too, which is a residential course and you want to leave your family behind and do that course i said it is not about family it is not about my child it is about me i right. wanted to be a part of premier institute which i could not when i was in a graduation if now i am getting an opportunity why not and that again was a change because at that 30 and 40 of age you are expected to be the nurturer of the family okay so for me it was no i have to bring this change in myself and i want to do a course which was much again uh, opposed by the uh, society around Uh, but i went so it is not about uh, whether i was uh, looking up to become a leader today people ask me how did you manage but right. i was enjoying that i was uh, wanting that so i was making all the efforts to ensure that i achieve what i am looking for and yes when Very i look nice. back at my journey today i enjoy every aspect of it and i feel yes uh, may not be right from perspective of many but i am happy being what i am so as a leader you are happy with what you have done and you continue to do what you feel happy about 
very nice yeah. very wonderful very good philosophy i would say so finally uh, if you have to give two advices to the youngsters who are listening to this program aspiring leadership what would that be one i'll go back to the same word dream big okay don't restrict your dreams right second there, there are no free lunches so you want to dream big but you will have to work hard to get uh, wherever you want to uh, achieve challenges would be there uh, yeah. work hard uh, people society families as, as we say kuch to log kahenge so log hamesha kahenge you will never find that you will have a perfect environment and everybody is supporting and the journey all those who have made a place for themselves wherever they are they have had a roller coaster ride right, right. and and as we say na if you have uh, followed a path which has been followed by many earlier you are not going to reach somewhere unique okay. you will have to find out a path for yourself which is different that yeah. is only going to as we say uh, uh, treading the difficult paths will lead to beautiful destinations so right. you will have to decide as to where you want to reach and the harder your dream or the bigger your dream is the harder the path is going to be so be mentally prepared with it and yes put in your best effort and be a best version of yourself every day i'm sure ev- everybody uh, will get their goals in future very nice so you are you are saying that be prepared to take a uh, roller coaster ride if you want to reach a unique position that's why we call this unique interactions so thank you so much uh, major uh, nubur gupta it was so interesting and very inspiring stories you brought out and wish you all the best in your future endeavors thank you i would like to end with if your actions inspire others to dream big to learn more to do more and be more than the life then you are a leader so every individual can be a leader if you believe in this thank you very much for this Excellent. opportunity Excellent. of interaction thank you thank you thank you